You are listening to the Examine Life with Bram Levinson. So I don't know if I've spoken in a past episode about how this podcast sort of came to be. I think I probably have, but I'm going to repeat myself. And so just bear with if you've heard this before. But when I first uh, decided that I was going to do a podcast, it was after I had been in England giving a, a yoga and meditation retreat there. And I came back from England very uh, very inspired, very tired, because it was the first time I had done it there, and everything was new. And once I've done it, it's established, and it's not as demanding as it always is the first time. But I came back from England, and I was really, really exhausted. But doing something new had sparked the desire in me to continue to up the ante, to continue to up the game, to continue to sort of take on new projects and, and I guess, grow in the process. Because the fact of the matter is I need to be challenged by the work I do. Yes, my intention is to accompany other people through their rougher moments, but ultimately the way that manifests, the context, the structure, the space or spaces that that occurs in, uh, I need to be challenged by. I feel I need to feel like I'm learning and that I'm growing in the process because for me, the idea of standing around in a yoga studio for the rest of my life teaching yoga and ju- and just doing that, um, that doesn't cut it. I need to I need to continually be looking at what else is possible and and to really strive for things that I doubt maybe that I can do or that are doable and then realize not only are they doable, but oops, look, they're done. Now what? And I know that sounds like it's sort of like an addiction. It's not an addiction at all, but I tend to feel that the things that I get inspired to do are divinely inspired. They're they're coming to me from somewhere else. It's not just me coming up with this stuff. And so if I feel inspired to do something, I then feel compelled to execute it because I believe that there is something uh, waiting for me to be lived throughout the process, after the process. And the bonus is that as I do it, I get to bring other people along with me so that their realities also get altered and hopefully elevated. So I came back from England and I just, I needed something new. And I spoke to one of my brothers and he said to me, you should do a podcast. He had done an episode or two for the company that he works on, or works at, rather, and he said, you know, you should give it a go. It's it's not that difficult in terms of putting it all together, uh, and and it would be just a perfect vehicle for you to do what you do and for you to get your voice out into the world and just affect, you know, a few more people. And so I was immediately into it, immediately into it. I thought, oh, great, this is challenging. I have no idea where to begin. And, you know, I did that thing where you spend like six hours trying to find a title for the, for the podcast. So I, you know, I, I came up with all these brilliant, well, brilliant, pseudo brilliant titles, you know, Googled them, realized that there are about 40 billion podcasts that already exist out there, that every title has been taken. Um, and and then over the next couple of days after I was, you know, I, I thought I had found a title, I, I, I started to question whether this was really something I wanted to do. And ultimately, I decided it wasn't something I was going to do because I, A, at that point, had thought that it would take the form as like an interview, chat show kind of thing, talk show. And I didn't want to be dependent on the schedules of the people who I was going to be interviewing, number one. Number two, I didn't want to get myself involved in something that would require, let's say, a weekly episode, thinking that I had to adhere to some structure that someone else had created. Uh, because there are moments in my year where, you know, things are very, very busy. And then there are moments in my year when I've got a lot more free time. So I didn't want to commit to something that I wasn't sure I could honor. So because of that, I then sort of killed the idea. I decided I wasn't going to do it. Cut to me getting a text from a friend of mine who's also a, a, a student who I've been working with for years who wrote me and said, look, I just have to tell you this. I was in meditation yesterday and this voice or, and I'm paraphrasing, but this voice or this thought came into my mind that said to me, Bram needs to do a podcast to get his voice out to more people. And so I'm telling you, now I've told you, I've done what I'm supposed to do. So I read this and just thought, 
what the hell? Have I discussed this with her? You know, so I, I wrote that to her and I said, have we discussed this? And she said, no, no, I'm just telling you what happened in my meditation. And I thought, okay, look, if it's coming to me like this, then this is just a sign. This is a sign that I'm supposed to do it. And listen, whether it's a sign or not, I gave it the meaning. I assigned meaning to it as being that little push that I needed to do this to get my voice out to, you know, people wherever you are, however you are. Um, And I thought, you know what, I'm going to do it on my own terms. And I'm not going to adhere to a specific schedule like one episode a week. And I'm just going to call it The Examined Life with Bram Levinson because I my first book is titled The Examined Life by Bram Levinson. And I thought, let's just, you know, keep it in the brand family. Why don't we? Um, and so that's it. But my intention, really, when I decided I was going to do it after, you know, she wrote me, <clears throat> um, my intention really was that I wanted to bring the yoga class to people who weren't coming to a yoga class. And what I mean by that, I don't mean that I wanted to bring the actual asana class. I I wasn't interested in bringing you the postures. I was interested in bringing you the subject matter that I bring to the classes in which we do the yoga postures. For me, the yoga class is just an excuse for me, number one, to bring everyone together, for us all to come together, but also for whatever needs to be expressed to come out of this this voice, this bramness, whatever. And so with that as a really clear intention, I, you know, embarked on these on these episodes. Now, last week in the yoga class, I was talking about something that occurred last week and a few of you reached out after class and over the days following the classes uh, to ask if I would talk about what I had talked about last week in an episode of the podcast because you wanted to be able to refer back to it because it it resonated. So that's what this episode is, essentially. Um, Last week, last Thursday morning, I gave the last class uh, at a company in which I'd been teaching for their employees for eight years. And let me just, you know, preface all of this by saying that I don't take a lot of yoga classes anymore. I don't teach a lot of yoga classes anymore. Uh, I would much rather move into the meditation realm. I'd much, much rather move into the one-on-one, the coaching, the mentoring, the guidance, that kind of thing. Uh, but occasionally I will take a yoga class when people are asking me, when people really want it and, and um, you know, it feels right for me. It doesn't happen often, but it's been known to happen. And this, well, last Thursday marked the end of an eight-year cycle. And to be honest, I knew that the company was in transition a year ago, and so I had sort of assumed that in January of this year, the classes would be over. So the fact that they lasted almost an extra year was a very pleasant surprise, and it and it really spoke to the commitment of the employees in the company who really, really showed up weekly for these classes. But listen, eight years with them was eight years of getting to know each other and eight years of seeing each other weekly and eight years of bringing whatever was going on in each of our own life scripts and our narratives and our lives into that room and bringing it onto the mat and either having a laugh together or talking about some serious stuff together as we move through the poses uh, you know, I, I see these classes that I give not as like I'm walking in and I'm speaking to a bunch of people and I leave and that's it. I really, I see it as many things. I see it as an energy exchange where I'm putting something out and the people who are in the room are also putting something out and it becomes cyclical, becomes a give and take, and then a give and take. Um, I also see it as an opportunity for us to inspire each other and learn from each other and, and share our stories. So, You know, the fact that this class was coming to an end for me was something. It was it it marked the end of a cycle and it marked the end of an era. Now, if you would have told me, let's say, six, seven years ago that that class would have been ending, I probably would have gone very much into the pragmatic brain, very much into the, okay, well, this class once a week represents this much money. So I need to, if this class is ending, I need to find another gig that's going to bring in that money so that uh, my income isn't affected. And I would have been very sort of Cartesian and very responsible according to, you know, society about, about getting that gig replaced. What I have learned over the past decade uh, is that 
if I let something go without feeling the need to cling to it, if I, uh, like, let's say, I, you know, well, not let's say, I did uh, a, a, a morning show, a breakfast television show here in Montreal. I did it for a couple of years. And I gave it up when it was good. And it was almost like I was testing universal source. I was testing life to see if I gave it up, if something else would enter into the equation to replace it. Because I firmly believe that there is no ending without something else beginning. Keep in mind that I have intensely and do still intensely study Hindu mythology. And in Hindu mythology, we are presented with the, the, the trinity, if you will, the god Brahma, who is the creator, the god Vishnu, his, who is the preserver, and the god Shiva, who is the destroyer. And Shiva's role is a really interesting one, because known as the lord of destruction and the lord of death, Shiva knows what his role in, in, in the universal cycle is, because it's a cycle. Shiva understands that something needs to end in order for something else to begin that nothing ends without something else beginning. And in my experience, nothing ends without something more beautiful beginning. And so this is what I have learned over the past decade. And so when I left the morning show, I was sort of testing this. I wanted to see if something more beautiful would enter into the equation after I gave up something that was going really well and for all intents and purposes and outward appearances was a good thing for me. And lo and behold, yes, something did enter into the equation. And since then, I keep doing it. I keep letting things go uh, to see what will replace it. And in 100% of the time, there's always something that replaces it. And I want you to consider how important what I'm talking about is, because in our culture, we have been encouraged, conditioned to believe that endings are something to grieve for. Endings are something to avoid. Endings are something that at all costs we need to avert our gaze from. We need to uh, sidestep. We need to pretend it isn't happening. But really, like we've been conditioned that endings are bad things. In my experience and in Hinduism and in spirituality, endings are not bad things. Endings are the gateway to beautiful things. Endings are the gateway to what comes next. Nothing ends completely. Nothing ends just for the sake of an ending. And so my relationship to the sense of an ending has changed because I used to be afraid of endings and now I'm not. And now what I do is I invite them in. I instigate them to see what comes in their wake, seeing it as just another part of the cycle. And if you think big picture, if you believe in reincarnation, and by the way, I don't know what I believe in that, uh, regarding reincarnation, but I mean... I know that the death of the body is just the death of the body. It doesn't mean that the energy that animated the body is gone. It means that that energy lives on in me and in you. And that, to me, is life after death. I mean, I wrote about it in my second book, in uh, A Year in the Light. But for me, it's all cyclical. We are always in the presence of a cycle. We are always in the midst of a cycle. And last Thursday marked the end of a cycle. Now, I was telling the classes, you know, I recognize that this is the end of the cycle, and as opposed to freaking out and 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 thinking pragmatically and economically, I'm just leaving it. I'm good. I'm rolling with it. Trusting, knowing that something will enter into the equation to replace it, whether that be, I don't know, something else, something else that is going to contribute to, I suppose, income. And trust me, like, I don't, I don't, I don't need one class. It's not going to make or break me. But anyway, um, and so I'm telling, you know, classes about this on Thursday and I'm telling classes about this on, on Saturday. And uh, by Saturday, little did I know that what was coming to replace it had already appeared. It didn't hit me until Sunday when I realized, oh, oh, my God, that's it. It, it. That just happened. Friday, an opportunity came towards me and and I took it and and look at that. Before you know it, something else entered into the, into the equation. And what that does is it just reinforces what we know. And when I say we, I'm talking about those of us who have lived this, those of us who have tested this, those of us who, I, I suppose, are awake to this knowledge. And that knowledge is that nothing ends without something else beginning. And maybe we should replace the word ending with beginning. Maybe it's not an ending. Maybe it's a beginning to something else. Maybe it's the portal to something else. 
Considering that we have been conditioned to believe that endings are bad things, many of us have stayed stuck in shitty relationships, hanging on to people for dear life because God forbid we should find ourselves at the end of a relationship. What about jobs? How many of us, how many of you right now are listening to me and you are in a job that you're not happy in? And it's easier to stay in a shitty situation because it's familiar and because it represents some semblance of security towards outwards appearances anyway, that you have been conditioned to believe are valid. So what I mean by that is you stay in a shitty job because it brings in money and you have a life to support. So better the devil you know. I've got kids, I can't go out on my own, that kind of thing. Our culture has put a higher value on finances than it has on health and happiness. And I know that happiness is a temporary situation. I know that it's fleeting. But what about wellness? What about contentment? What about satisfaction? What about those? If we were conditioned from infancy to not only believe, because I think belief is whatever, but to know that the end of something is just a phase that leads to the beginning of something else, so that the ending actually is a beginning. If we were taught that from you know infancy, our relationship to this entire game of life would be completely different. We wouldn't feel like it was a risk to leave our relationship or to leave our job or to let go of friends who were toxic or to let go of any situation which was toxic. And I understand I'm, I'm recording these words leading up to uh, Christmas, to the holidays, to whatever holiday you celebrate, whatever faith you observe. Many of us are going to be seeing family over the period of the holidays. And for many of us, and I've spoken about this before, but for many of us, you know, it ain't good. For many of us, it's, you know, you see these people and these people just rub you the wrong way. They know how to trigger you. In some cases, you know, you're dealing with people who who don't love you the way that theoretically they should love you according to whatever their role is in a family. So if it's your mother, she's not being maternal or your father being paternal or whatever. And if we were taught that, you know, you can put a stop to something, you can set a boundary, and that may serve as an ending, maybe to a bad pattern, but it's also the beginning towards everything that you would gain of value. If we were taught that, then wouldn't we be more apt to make the decisions that would be the right ones for us? Wouldn't we be more apt to be able to recognize where we are in the cycles that we are in? Because life is a circle. Everything we do is a loop. Whether it's your marriage, whether it's your job, whether it's each of your friendships, whether it's your relationship to your body, whether it's the life that you are blessed with right now, there is a cycle to it. And I think that it's really important that we understand where we are in that cycle. A year ago, I thought that I was at the end of the cycle in that corporate yoga class that I was giving. I was wasn't quite as far close to the end as I, as I thought I was, but I had a good idea. In my relationship, I'm somewhere in the middle. I'd like to think I'm somewhere in the middle. Uh, in my career, s- s- between, let's say, the second and third uh, quarter of it, I'm, I'm somewhere in the middle with that as well. At least I think I am. Um what about with my health? What about with my family? What about in my relationship with my mother and my father and, and, and everything? These are all cycles that I find myself in, that I am in. And you are no different. You are in a cycle with your work, with your family members, with your friends, with your job, with your health, with your diet, whatever. Whatever sort of side narrative there is to your experience of life, there is a cyclical element to it. And you are somewhere in that cycle. And I think it's important that we understand where we are, at least have an idea. We may not be accurate, but it's important to know that this is a cycle. And the, I guess the thing that we know the most about cycles is that there is change in cycles. This is what we know about life. Everything is change. Everything is in a constant state of transformation. So if we recognize that we are in a cycle somewhere in that, I guess, timeline in the cycle, where eventually we will loop back to where we began, where the circle will close, the cycle will close. What that does is it gives us a certain degree of self-awareness. And in that self-awareness, what we find is gratitude. 
when we remind ourselves that we are somewhere in a cycle, let's say with our, our partner who we're in a relationship with, our husband, our wife, whatever, understanding that we are somewhere in that cycle with them reminds us that nothing is forever. It reminds us that everything is changing and that what is good is also changing. And so if things are good, then that means that things aren't bad. And if things aren't bad, then we should be grateful that they're not bad. We should be grateful that things are good. All of a sudden, we find gratitude by recognizing that we are somewhere in that cycle, let's say, with our romantic partner, our relationship, whatever. What about our job? What about uh, when you start a job and you're at the beginning of the job and you recognize that you're at the beginning of that cycle? Now, that could be daunting to some people because they think that it's like an uphill slog. For other people, depending on the meaning that they assign to it, the, the future, you know, the sky's the limit. The, the the amount of possibility that lie ahead, or possibilities that lie ahead, are innumerable, and and so there's excitement. But that excitement, and even that sort of maybe motivating dread, or the gratitude of recognizing where you are in a good moment, these matter because they wouldn't exist if we didn't recognize, if we didn't have some sort of self awareness about where we were in the cycle. Now, what about if we recognize that we are in a harmful situation, bad relationship, bad job, bad friendship? Well, that's when we have to become a little bit more comfortable with the concept, the sense of an ending, and take responsibility for ushering in this, the ending sooner than maybe would have happened if we would have just let it lie and let it run its course. Maybe that free will that we have to exercise is meant to be exercised in situations like that so that we can usher in what's waiting for us after we close this chapter, after we close this cycle. I've spoken to so many of you throughout the years in a, in a counseling, mentoring kind of way uh, or context about, you know, relationships. Many of you have come to me because you were in relationships that you weren't sure you wanted to be in. And, and you know, if it was established that, you know, the relationship wasn't healthy and that you should be out of it, you know that the, one of the first things that comes out of my mouth is the longer you stay in a situation that is no longer serving you, the longer you are delaying getting to everything and everyone that is waiting for you out in what is, you know, quote unquote, your future. But all that good stuff that's waiting, you can't get there until you deal with this. And the way that I've always explained it is I need to, you know, open the door to let into the room whatever's going to come into the room. Or sometimes I need to shut the door in order to keep everything to, you know, to, to, to end a chapter, end a cycle and move to another room. So whatever the metaphor is that you want to use, use a metaphor. But understand that there are going to be situations where you need to put your foot down, where you need to make a decision. And Trust me, if you're in a place of unhappiness, the chances that you are going to regret this decision are slim to none. Many people stay on the fence about making a decision because they're afraid that they're making the wrong one and that they're going to regret it. Well, let me just say something here. Everything coexists. Okay? Everything coexists. Everything exists at the same time. The good, the bad, the ugly. So right now, if you are one of those people who believes that we're fucked as like a, you know, a human race and that like the world is messed up and we're screwed and whatever, then you will be able to see, you'll be able to find information, sources that reinforce that. Now, if you're someone like me who believes that everything is, you know, malleable and changeable and that ultimately there is more light than dark in the world and that we are fine and that we are going to be fine and that everything will reset in terms of a balance then I, you know, you will also see that reflect in the world around you because it all coexists. Everything is, is existing and occurring simultaneously. So if you make a decision to better your life, chances are you're going to see how your life is bettered. You're not going to be seeing, oh God, I screwed it all up because there will be aspects that are good. It is completely dependent on what you point your mind towards because all, it all coexists. Every one of us could have regrets about decisions we've made. But the majority of us have looked to, I guess, the value, the things of value that we have gained through the decisions that we took, the hard decisions. And we've used that as justification for continuing to move forward and to not look back.
and to not give ourselves shit for, oh, I potentially gave something up. Well, listen, you know what? The end of something always leads to the beginning of something else. There will always be something else ahead for us to hold on to and for us to be inspired by and for us to find value in because it really is about finding value. So I guess what I'm saying to you all is you will be able to find another job. And you will be able to find someone else to be in a relationship with. I've said this a million times, probably exactly the way I'm saying it right now. You will find what you are looking for. But if you settle for what is given to you, instead of understanding that you have the ability to go out and get, I don't want to say get more, but get what is going to sort of, I don't know, for lack of a better term, spark joy. Oh my God, I literally just threw up in the back of my throat saying those words because I'm referencing what you know I'm referencing. But <sighs> the sentiment is, 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 is real. The struggle is real. If, if you can find what is going to make you feel the most alive, if you can find that thing that is going to make you so grateful for every single day that you have because you feel that there is balance and that you're using your time in a way that makes you feel satisfied and content with this experience of life, then you won't regret having given up the shit that was keeping you at a level of mediocrity and at a level of, okay, well, I, I, guess, I guess I'll take what I can get. Some people have worked their asses off to achieve a certain thing that they thought was going to bring them value and then it doesn't bring them value. And then they feel, well, okay, well, I mean, I I asked for it, so I, I now have to sort of stick it out. You know what? You're allowed to change your mind. No one ever said you weren't. No one is going to give you what you need than you. No one is going to do it. This is something that my grandmother taught me. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want because no one's going to do it for you. So I'm going to put that out to you. I'm going to ask you to identify where you are in the cycle of whatever's going on in your life, your work cycle, your relationship cycle, relationship to yourself cycle, the cycles that you have with your friends, the cycle that you have, let's say, in relation to your politics or your faith. Where are you in that cycle? in those cycles. I want you to be able to identify that so that you can sort of reap whatever the byproducts are of that kind of self-awareness, whether it's gratitude, whether it's realization, whether it's motivation to act, whether it is motivation for inaction, so staying where you are and sticking it out a little bit longer to see what happens. Uh, But I think that these things are essential for us to really feel like we have as much influence in this experience of life as we can have. Ultimately, I want you to trust. I want you to know. I want you to know this. Nothing ends without something else begin, without, without something else beginning, rather. And so maybe look at the cycle of your relationship to endings. Look at where you are. You may find yourself realizing as you listen to these words that you are towards the end of that cycle and that you are about to create a different cycle where you are in a healthier relationship to endings because you don't see them as the ending of something or something to grieve, but rather something to celebrate, something to navigate, something to keep your eyes on the horizon for so that you can see what that thing is that could only follow the ending. If it weren't for the ending, it wouldn't follow. I want you to give this all a good think. Let me know, you know, what this means to you. Keep reaching out. I really, really appreciate when you guys write out to me um, and let me know that you're listening and let me know, you know, how this is all affecting you and if it's affecting you. Um, But I do think it's important. I'm really grateful to those of you who asked me to record uh, this subject in an episode because I think it's something that, that, that... you know, is is one of life's great equalizers. I think that we're all on some sort of timeline that loops back into itself in all aspects of our lives. And I think it can only do good to understand that and to try and assess where we are on those timelines and then see what benefits we reap from doing that. So with all that said, I do want you to give it a think. Feel free to reach out. I'll see you later. This has been the Examine Life with Bram Levinson.